Good morning and welcome to Direct Drilling. On a pleasant morning, Saturday morning, and the sun's shining. There's actually a little bit of warmth in the sun as well. Where we are is, we're on the field, or one of the fields, that we broadcast with a bit of wheat off the heap. Last, uh, 2nd of October it was last year just to put a little bit of cover on this ground. Not a lot, but at least it was, it was something. It's come away quite nicely, but it was sprayed off about 10 days ago. It was given a little bit of glyphosate. It's also had some muck put on out of the, um, well, muck that the cattle produce. Um, based on paper waste, this, so you'll see it's a, it's a little bit, it's a bit grey, um, but It'll do the job quite nicely. What? Anyway, let's move along here. What I want to have a look at is, let's try and get in the right place here. I've got to try and find it. I should have put some sticks in. But what we did here, 2nd of October, broadcast this, and I came in with some clover seed and various other little bits of seed and scattered them about just to see if the clover would establish itself um, from a broadcast in October but mainly knowing that this was going to be sprayed off prior to being planted in the spring. Now if I go back to years and years ago back in the day when I was farming um, whenever I sprayed off a pasture with glyphosate the only thing that ever survived was the clover so the thought being that if you have clover in a field and you spray it with glyphosate it shouldn't kill the clover now we're here now in that patch of clover and let's have a, a quick shifty and we'll be taking another look at this um at another time but let's i think you, you can safely say that 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 wheat is being killed right now there's the clover right next to it that hasn't been touched now let's see if there's any other weeds around now there's a bit of clover there and that's kind of beginning to look a little bit sick now i've read various bits and pieces around and about this yes the clover can begin to look sick but then it will recover so there's let's have a look there's a bit of chickweed that's obviously looking sick there's cleavers in here as well um there's the the cleavers and there maybe it's taking a little bit longer to turn but I'm going to keep an eye on this because it's going to be interesting to see. Let's have a look. There's some more cleavers here. They're taking a little bit longer, but they're not standing up, you know. They're lying flat. And the chickweed's definitely taking a hit. The cleavers. Let's have a Well, I don't know. It's borderline. Um, there is that purple, in, but that could be the cold weather. I'm not sure, but I doubt it with cleavers, so I think they're dying as well. So we may have had a degree of success here. But it's early days. The reason I did this experiment was that we have a plan this spring. Let's have another little look at this clover and look how that's that's looking reasonably healthy, mind. So if I could just say that the idea being with this is that this spring, when we can get on and plant, we have some we have two fields close to the farm that are to put into spring barley and John's going to under sow them with white clover. And we're going to see how it goes. And in the autumn, harvest the spring barley, graze the white clover with the lambs. Having to manage obviously bloat, so that can be managed just by the number of lambs and the access to the quantity of clover get that graze down over the winter and whatever we decide to plant the following spring we just plant through the clover if any weeds come up over the winter we spray with glyphosate and we see if it'll well if it will or won't kill the clover I, I don't think it will because like I say years ago and when I was spraying pasture off I was only using half rate with a wetter, so it was around about two litres to the hectare 
pint and a half to the acre, around about that sort of that sort of rate. And that's basically what's used here. And we're back in amongst here. There's some more clover, and I can't see any of it that's shown obvious signs of dying. I'm sure some of it's just being eaten by something. I mean, munched by slugs, no doubt. But it's going to be an interesting. If it works, it may mean that we can put the clover down. You may get four productive years out of the clover, possibly even more. Because it's white clover, it shouldn't grow any higher than about six to eight inches high. We're not bothered about the straw off the spring barley. We can basically just combine the heads off it. And it, it gives annually some fresh forage for the lambs in September and if you can get that every four years plus it's producing a little bit of nitrogen putting some nitrogen into the ground and in for now really isn't it so let's have another look we've got some more cleavers here um, it's hard to know whether I think they are looking a tad sick really aren't they yeah I would say that they probably are um, let's see if we've got any other weeds. There's some trefoil in here as well, somewhere. Um, I wonder if that's much much the same as the clover, where it won't, possibly won't get hit. But the trefoil did not survive the winter so well. But there is some here somewhere. Bear with me, I'm going to try and find some. This movie's all dead and gone. No, no, I can't see it. But anyway, that's the idea. So, it's a lovely day, hopefully. I think um, the next few days we're going to get some rain, but then it might settle down a little bit, and we might get this lot planted in the next, well, probably towards the end of next week, I think. But thanks for watching, thanks for listening. If you've got any comments, stick them down below. Um, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot now.